Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to call to order the Fairfield Golf Commission meeting uh, for December 12th. Um, I'm going to waive the Pledge of Allegiance. I apologize for not being there in person. I'm not feeling well, but um, still able to call in. So I thought we'd still hold the meeting. Um, let's take a quick attendance. Um, this is Keith Varian. If we could just kind of go around the table. Uh, Peter Seacrest. All right. Priscilla Schultz. Liam Harris. Mike Harrington. Mike Feinstein. Bob Bigginett. Peter Grace. Anthony Calabrese. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, first agenda item is to um, approve the minutes from our last meeting on November 14th. Are there any comments or revisions to the minutes that Prue circulated? No, and I make a motion to approve the minutes. That's Priscilla. I second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, I'll apply. Right. Sounds there. Right. That's right. All right. Um, let's jump into the staff reports. Um, Bob, we closed the course yesterday, it sounds like, right? Correct. <coughs> All right. How'd it go? I thought we had a wonderful season. Uh, right rate up to the precipice of 50,000 rounds at Smith, which is incredible to me. Um, we, I thought we maintained a great pace all year, and I didn't see any major issues at all. Um, in general, I thought it was a wonderful year. The weather was great. Um, I think without great weather, it's hard to get to 50,000 rounds. <laughs> I would keep that in mind. Uh, besides that, I don't really have much to report. Looking forward to a little time off, reset the uh, <laughs> engines, and yeah. set some goals for next year. So what um, what was the um, storage container that's over there now? That's for the restaurant's outside furniture. That's what we Got it. Okay. okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that was for. Um, good. All right. I thought it was a great year. Um, are there any any questions for Bob? Actually, I do All have right. a so if we get, I'm sorry, Keith. So okay. hopefully we get the T's in, and that's my question for Peter. When they do, when will the USGA, do you have to make an appointment with no, them? the USGA has pretty much got us on hold until we're ready. So okay. So I think they'll put it up on the list as soon as we're ready. Okay. So we you had were, it scheduled for, they were going to come out last summer, and then we started, yeah. I'm so glad they didn't, right? Yeah, no, that's I didn't want them like, to come out without the new teaser, we, we just have to have them back out again. Okay. They're supposed to come once every seven, seven, seven years, years I yeah. Think it was. Um, so and we were a little ahead, and, uh, but I, they seemed reasonable. Okay. Now, will you be able to get the new cards? I don't think that's going to be too challenging. You don't think it's going to no. be? Okay. Once we officially establish those yardages, right. we could go Perfect. The cards. Perfect. All right. Thank you. But I know you tried to tease. <laughs> Three times now. Oh, you right. tried to do it? Three times, yeah. Right. Last three times. I've encouraged a lot of people to do it, and they are all to a person loving. Yep. They're, they're going to be terrific. Excellent. And I'm trying Excellent. to tell people what the ultimate goal is <clears throat> as far as getting five sets of tees out there, yeah. um, which is probably take a while, but and based on handicap or swing speed and not based on gender right. or age or anything else. So I, I love the vision. I'm so excited. Let's get more, more birdie putts. We yeah, more it. more birdie packs. <laughs> yeah, so the tees are good, and it's the best thing about the new tees for those with slower swing speed is that you now have decisions to make about what club. You're not just getting your longest club and just trying to blast away. It's like okay, you know, what, it's a little more strategy involved, which is wonderful, which it, which it hasn't been. So especially on seven, seven and eight. Yep, very exciting. So, all's good on that front. Like on <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a oh, challenging, it's a challenging it, shot. It, it is a very a challenging shot. But she did play there with six or seven yesterday. Oh, good. Yesterday? No, Saturday, Saturday. She didn't play eight. 
Yeah, she didn't like that shot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put a chick there. We want to put it over. So you have to go directly over the over pond. Water. It's a hundred yard shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah see, now it's, it's with the par threes, you're taking long clubs, sure. which long. you shouldn't have to. Now you can use an iron. Yeah. And you can you you can think about your shot a little bit more. So. It's yeah. the right move. It, it, it'll take yeah. time yeah. to get people to believe it. But. Yep. All right. Sorry, Keith. That's yeah. That's it. No, it's perfect. That's great. All right, Anthony, you're up. Yep, everybody should have received an advanced copy of the numbers for November. Um, as Bob said, you know, we ha we've had a really great year uh, pushing 50,000 rounds. Um, Budget-wise, uh, it looks like our revenues are going to be spot on or maybe just over where we were projecting. So um, we had a good fall, you know, a good first start of the year. So um, – I anticipate as long as we don't have a wet spring, our, our numbers will be right where they should be. So um, everything looks good. And same with par three. Uh, those numbers are uh, almost identical to where they were last year at this point. Yep. Yeah, I still notice it's it's sort of the same continuous trend, though, of, you know, non-resident rounds are down, um, you know, year over year. But uh, we're more than making up for it. Um, I mean, you know, the rounds are just, you know, doing great, but it is interesting as to why the, the non-resident rounds are down. Um, yeah, you know, almost 2,000 they're down. Mm -hmm. uh, but like yeah. you said, you know, we made up for it in resident rounds being up, uh, but at some point that's going to, it's going to hurt the bottom line. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, Keith, one of the, and I'm not sure if we're able to, um, figure this out, but it may be, you know, we've had residents who heretofore had not been past or ID members, you know, took IDs and then are now on that, in the resident line, because I do think, right, if you're not an ID guy, you fall into the non-resident bucket. Yep. Is that right? Right. So, you know, it's hard to know really what's going down there, but, you know, that could be part of the and yes. I think also that when the residents get, what's the advantage the residents get? That's the, well, at, at Smith, anyways, the difference is. I, I think residents that. Residents and pass holders are seven days out right. at 5 a.m., non residents are six days out. Yeah, and I, I tell you, knowing the competition for that 5 a.m. to get a tea time, I, I bet you some of the non residents are getting squeezed out and they're not being able to get tea times versus not wanting to play. Yeah. That's yeah, but Peter's point. right. There's 400. There's 400 fewer resident ID cards. Yep. So it, that could be. I mean, it's not. A, it's not the all all of it, but it could be um, a factor. Yeah, maybe it's a combination. Yeah. Just something to keep an eye on. But right now the numbers look good. Okay. Great. Fewer resident ID. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, the residents are predominantly. <laughs> people more active. All right, Peter, you're up. Hello. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, get some of these projects we talked about. Um, I just want to bring up one thing that I didn't even think about. Is uh, 1,500 yards at South Pine Creek? Correct, if we want to get it rated. We have, cause I guess you can't use that as a USGA index. I, I was never aware of it, but uh, somebody brought it up to me about that the uh, scores don't count down there because it's not 1,500 yards or larger. So, what's, what's John Johnson is, I put that in. USDA, you had to be 1,500 yards to get official rating. For the par three, right. what, is, what are we? Uh, we just looked into it because I was wait, wait, just, uh, what, Somebody just brought it up to us the other day, so I was just bringing it up to you guys. That, how, uh, how short, how close is it? Uh, yeah. We're like a couple hundred yards short. Oh, that was But he right. says he's got room to expand if we want to do that, but that's just, I'm just throwing that out there for starters. Because uh, I didn't know if it's, uh, the scores do not count down there. Not that I play there that often, but anyway. But on the uh, Smith side of things, we're going to start with the keys. Uh, I'm keeping the guy that got skeleton crew now, so we're we clean up is pretty much done. We're working uh, like I read we the steam cleaner for a month to get all the equipment steam cleaned and cleaned up to start working all the equipment. Hoping all the new equipment's coming in. Hey, there's no guarantees. I'm getting a run around on all the new equipment that we ordered. So we may still be using mowers from 1988 from the uh, spring. So uh, I do have a 
tree work. I can quote some trees that uh, we're talking about seven, that uh, tulip tree. So that I'll even give a better shot on number seven. That left side fairway bunker is kind of a double whammy. Yeah. You got the bunker and then you got the tree in your way. So that big tree is uh, slated to come down as well as a few on number nine. And like I said, I got a skeleton crew. We're up there, which uh, I'm going to start working on some tree work and the tea work. And uh, I'll probably keep them close to the first of the year. And then I only I'll, I'll have two guys up there working for in a part time camp. So that's going to probably just go down taking care of all the equipment and snow removal as the uh, snow comes in. That's all I have to say. What's your thinking on card CPW do it, do you think, or not? Uh, yeah, yeah, CPW can help us out on it. And I, I don't think the plants are open. I don't even know if the plants are still open. We're not going to get to it until probably the spring anyway. Well, the asphalt is until what, March or April? Mm, depending on the weather. Yeah. But probably March. Around March 1st. But are you thinking about doing some in the spring? On number 7, definitely. Are we going to do any drainage on seven? Well, I mean, I've got a car path in there. It's just, it's just too, too bad. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of drainage, but I'm not going to go too crazy. I just don't have the uh, path to do it. Well, I'm going to do it. 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 i am <laughs> a few other ones. And there's one by the bunker down by the... The one hanging over yes, the green. The one, the one that's hanging over hanging the green. Oh, the the right, right oh, absolutely. What, what about the 50 of them that are, like, blocking your second shot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love a hurricane to go and take them all oh, down. But... <laughs> no, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's just so many trees that are labeled out there. It's just a matter of time, money, and getting to them. What my guys can handle and what we have to do to uh, ship out to um, we, we did go with uh, Northeast Tree last year, and they destroyed the first car path on number one. So I went with it, going with it. a couple other companies, getting quotes from a couple other companies. They're going to say about these trees out there. But uh, I've got one guy lined up to take the trees down on 9 and 7. Now that we're closed, we can get out there. Great. All right. Any more questions for Peter? All right. Uh, Greens Committee, I'm not sure you guys have a lot to report, but uh, anything you want to say? Well, I, I played Saturday for my last round of the season. Um, the course was in great shape. It w was a beautiful day out there. Um, so there was no wind and as long as you layers. So it was, the course really was It was cold. Like, it was a little chilly, but it wasn't bad. Um, I mean, I wish the, the uh, traps were raked. I was in those enough, but... Uh, um, <laughs> No, <laughs> they're a hazard. <laughs> yeah, they certainly are. But yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, just the unfortunate thing, and I'm not sure if that's going to affect anything. There were a lot of ball marks on the greens, and I don't know because they were frozen, and they, and it, that they'll they'll heal, right? Eventually, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was out there Saturday myself, and I was actually fixing quite a few ball marks. Yeah. There, so. Okay. So I yeah, know. but no, the course is in good shape. And I I gave myself the proper light up on this one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I say when it's frozen, the, the, the balls end up so far away from the green, they forget that their ball hits the green. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, people yeah, forgot to fix some, them. Some pretty good bounces out, out there. The yeah, other. absolutely. <laughs> they some big old bounces over the green. Sorry to go back, but Anthony, when is the budget going to be put together? It's a great question. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe next month, if we're lucky. I mean, I have to say, Keith has said all along we'll get cart paths and trees and drainage and it'll all get down to Peter's budget. And Peter's sitting right here saying, I don't have the money for it. Oh, I don't have it. Which means it ain't going to happen for another year. Well, some things yeah. will happen, but that means nothing huge. But we're still waiting for non recurring capital, aren't we? Not going yeah. To... yeah. Yeah. I mean, non recurring will go for in February. Um, Budget, hopefully, we'll start presenting in January, or at least we'll start meeting about the budget in January would be my guess, so hopefully that'll be on the agenda here. But, I mean, again, that's money for July, right? So, I mean, he could do work now if he has the manpower to do it. Right. I mean, he's got, we've got the budget, so. The problem yeah, is. Yeah, we were talking about operating funds, yeah. right? Like the money that's there right, right now. Right. Uh, no, that's what no, we were talking about. That's the problem. Right. 
I mean, all I'm, you know, we got this long range plan, we got all these projects, and we keep saying we're going to put it in Peter's budget, whether it's between now and next July or whether it's fiscal year 23, and I don't see it. And we'll put the money in, I don't see it happening. No, I don't, I, we, we haven't done it yet. Great. Right. Hmm? We haven't done it for the July yet. That's all coming up. This, and I'm referring to probably the approval. That's why I'm asking when the budget is going to be put together, because I'd like to see if the budget's going to have enough money to do that. Right now, well, I mean, the budget is zero increase. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> We've already been given the you know, the directive. So, let's be honest. Are we going to be able to do all the car path work we wanted to do? The drainage on seven we wanted done? More trees and just a few that are left from the uh, USGA report? Or are we just not going to do any of that stuff? I'd love to do it all. I got, I got good prices on it all. It's just, just, uh, I just with the materials alone, the prices. Uh, I, I understand that. But, but, uh, you know. I know it isn't going to be easy, but I just don't see any action <laughs> to do it. Yeah, I've got my first budget meeting, I think, next week with the town. Okay. So once they look at the budget and say, okay, then I will bring it to the commission. But I can't bring it before that. So. Yeah. Well, what can we fit into the current? Like, what can we fit in that we have right now? I mean, that was what I always thought we were talking about, Anthony, is that we could try to find a way to make it work now. Yep, agreed. That's what I think Peter's been doing. Yeah. Right? I mean, he, he just talked about tree work. He talked about cart paths on seven. And work. Yep. Key work, right? I mean, that's all stuff coming out of the budget. Yeah, I guess, right, the, the, right the, the first item was the tees, right? If we get the tees done, that was our objective number one and then clean up the trees, and then it was going to be, at least what I thought was going to be, um, full replacement of the car pass if we could fit it into the budget. Yeah, I, I think that's what Peter just reported as well. All right. And no drainage. Okay. okay. We get another wet year yeah. that problem. I mean, I think it's priorities, and I think we're... Saying what the I mean, is it all, it's, 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 it's all right. Right. a big project. It's, you know, drainage has got to go with the car path work, and it's, just, it's uh, not separated. Maybe it number seven. Number, number seven needs a lot of work. We didn't get the. We put out a plan, and then we missed last year's budget thing. It just feels. I think maybe it feels just long. Well, the, the process is long. I mean, I think we talked about this in, I mean, I'd have to go back. I'm, I'm sure Mike can remember better than I can when we actually talked about this. But, I mean, it was probably sometime in the summer or, you know, May, June, uh, which would be the budget we're in now, which, again, Peter's saying that he's going to work on the T's, he's going to work on trees, and then he's looking at the cart path, all within the current budget. So, I mean, those are all things that are on that plan. The next budget, which again starts in July, is when we'll look at Peter's budget again and say, okay, these are the next several things. And again, I don't expect that he's going to be able to fin finish all the tree work and obviously not all the cart paths. There's no possible way to do that in one shot. Um, so again, I think it's a multi-year thing, but right now I don't have that budget to show you guys saying, hey, here's the budget for you know, July through June of next year. I, 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 just, yeah. I just feel like and it's going to be zero right. increase. Right, and we've already been told it's going to be a zero increase. So, I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if that gets cut more as it goes through the RT, you know, to, through the Board of Selectmen, and Board of Finance, and the RTM. So, and when you're looking at a zero increase with 11% inflation, it, it's a loss all around. So, anyway. All right, well, I think the good news is now that the course is closed, um, Peter can start doing some of the things that we couldn't do when the course was open. So, I think. I think we'll start seeing some of the progress on those items, you know, between now and, you know, course opening. Um, so that's good. All right. Uh, where are we? Uh, what they do. Right? Part three. Anything on the part three course, guys? Something to report. It's too short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find a couple That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that average is 166 a hole. Yeah. 1,500 yards. That's a long part of three. I'm surprised that's their number. Is that the tips we're talking about? Or, uh... 
Exactly. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. Is it, yeah, is it from the blues or is it's it? It's got to be well, a minimum, so it has to be a far back. I actually know the answer to that. It's yeah. from the back of the tee box, whether that's where you're putting the markers or not. Yeah. Okay. So he just has to extend the tee box uh -oh. longer, but it doesn't necessarily need to play, play that, play that one. There, I got the markers there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That it, that seems doable. Because it, mm -hmm. the max would be. We're going to go okay. to the football field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, old business. The rates for the par three. Um, kind of curious to see, you know, what everybody thinks on this one. Bob, did you have any opportunity to to look at any of the other par threes? Again, I, my personal feeling is they're, the rates, if anything, are too low, but I probably wouldn't touch them. Um, but I'm curious what, you know, what everybody else thinks. I think we're fairly priced in the marketplace. Yeah. When was the last increase? Last year. Or this year, I guess. For the part three. Yeah, I thought we discussed, what did we discuss last meeting? That they hadn't been... I raised it. I wasn't supposed to. Okay. I thought a dollar across the board meant a dollar across the board. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, good. Okay. So they were raised. <laughs> yeah, but I think Bob was asking, like, just because, uh, you know, um, it's they, they are low, but, um, you know, the only one I was curious about was Tashua um, and what their uh, part three is. It's, it's a different it's type of course than ours. It's not a part three. Yeah, it's an executive it's course. It's, it's yeah, it's true. Comparable yeah, there is a, it's, it's short beach, but even short right. beach. Is yeah, like, short beach. Yeah, yeah it's right. really short beach. You're right. Not even, that's no. not even a hundred a hole. It's right. right. Yeah, I was researching. I yeah. went online to find anywhere. It's hard. There's nothing not really like correct. It's a fairly priced too. I think by the rounds you're driving through there, it's showing that mm -hmm. it's fairly priced. And it's kind of what you want, right? An affordable option for people exactly. to learn where to play. I, I agree. Well, all right. So, uh, it, yeah, I, I think there's we're no interest in. Yeah, I think we're in good shape, and we're not losing money there like we used to. So, yeah, that always helps. Fine. You want a motion to confirm that, Keith? No, I don't think so. I think we did it on the last meeting. The part three rates where they are in 2020. Yeah. For year 2023. Uh, I don't think we need a motion. All right. Okay, we don't. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we do because we're not doing anything, and we already did it last meeting. So. Um, I don't think we need to uh, approve again um, the rates unless somebody feels differently. I, I just don't see a need for it. Okay. Um, all right. Rules for um, golf outings. Did everybody have a chance to just take a look at these in general? Um, and again, I don't know what year these were put out, um, but I think they have been tweaked slightly over the over the last couple of years. But I just wanted everybody to kind of just put fresh eyes on them and see what their thoughts were, uh, particularly Bob and sort of the way these are run and, and what do we need to do to make these reflect reality. I will confess that I looked at the policies and procedures manual. It's in there. I don't have the rules for outings. So it's I in there. I didn't see the rules. Well, that's fine. We don't have to decide today. I mean, we don't have to. I mean, you know what I mean? We can all just look at them again and talk about them in January and just put it on the agenda for January. But where are they? They're not in the uh, document that has the policies. Yeah, it's a separate PDF on our website. Um, I linked it in my email. If you don't have it, I'll, I can resend that email to everybody so I, everybody has it fresh in their email. Keith, if you would do that, that would be wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. Sorry, yep. Keith. No, no, it's all good. Don't worry. Um, yeah. Really kind of wanted to hear what, what, you know, really the way that they kind of run versus the, what we say, um, because I want I want these to match sort of the way we're doing it. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, so, Prue, will you just add that uh, to the next one? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Um, meeting dates. Um, Before you get there, Keith, on your old business. Yeah. I think there's yep. one season. There's a season pass that we need to address. That's right. The mm -hmm. seven-day non-resident senior pass at five hundred dollars. 
It's just a regular night. Has on weekends a $25 a round discount, which is a 20 round break even. Near, nearly all of our other passes break even in the 30 to 40 round range. So I think we should change to a $15 reduction for 18 holes, both for weekdays and weekends. For the non-resident seven-day pass and the adult resident seven-day pass, and that puts all those break-evens at 33 days. Um, Liam, did um, what I, he had done some more analysis on this as well? Um, right. What were your thoughts on the numbers? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think there's two levers you can pull here. There's the uh, sort of upfront cost and the running cost. Right. Yeah, I didn't want to raise the 500 So I, I think it's the, the bigger question, too, is, you know, ignoring the, the senior season passes, uh, do we want to look at maybe creating a disincentive for the, the non-senior, you know, season pass to possibly phase them out in a couple of years and just have only have four season senior passes? That was, that was another thing I was thinking about. Like, Wow. Maybe we want to simplify the rate structure and on the pricing matrix and all that stuff and just try to try to look to uh to phase it out over a couple of years and if people have a big uh uproar about that we can address it in year two or year three when it comes around. Do we wanna look at as part of normalizing everything to like thirty to forty rounds, like Mike was saying, like instead of pulling the, the per round lever, do we maybe we pull the the yeah, upfront lever, and then we, we push it even harder to phase out a couple of the ones we don't want. And it's just a discussion. I'm not yeah, saying we how, phase it out. How long has this policy been in effect? Is it $25? Uh, uh, it's a long time. I think, I think, that I, know of. I think what happened was <laughs> we kept, we kept, we kept raising the all the things like by equal dollar amount. Right, yeah. And the non residents just like the benefit became yeah. more for the non residents because they're higher, they're on a higher basis. So what happens is it just gets out of whack after yeah. a while. I don't know how it's Yeah, I, I don't want to get rid of this these season passes. Oh, I, I know, think I agree. I, that's not what I'm saying. No, I think we need to make just saying we've got the one, break, even, break even right, the break even point for non residents, I think we need to even that up. Even though we want more non residents. <laughs> right. Right, right. Yeah. Well it's, it's like just, it's a big they're not really, they're not super utilized. Not a lot, but a ton of people that would buy them. And there's a few people who are just massively used yeah, the ones right. that they buy, right? So okay. it's like, if you look at it from a course maintenance point of view, and the, the cost, we're losing money on the ones, like the guys that are ripping up the course with torn around, I don't know how they get these in, but uh, ripping up the, like, basically losing out money to pay Peter yeah. to help fix the course back Do we know, do we know the number of these? Uh, it was all on that spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. the vast There's only 200 total season passes. Right. Yeah, right. Most of them don't make the break. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm getting right. I don't have in front of me. Oh, here. This is the break. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the, there's a big discrepancy between the break even point with non resident passes and resident passes. And I think we need to fix that. Um, yeah, but I. I like the the around. Around. Right. I got you. Right. No, uh, yeah. No, I know. Um, yeah, I would hate to get rid of the season passes. Can I, Priscilla, can I just ask why that is? It's such a, can you hear, sorry. Um, I'm not suggesting that either, but it's such a, there's just, a, it's such a small number. I think it's like 7% of, if you add the season passes along with the IDs, it's such a small number that actually utilize the season pass. Is there? Well, I, you know, number one, it always was a real reason for that. Well, the, the the first reason, which I it, it, it does not hold true anymore, was that it was nice for the town and the course to get the money up front for for paying. True. Um, now, obviously, we don't have to do that, but it's nice to show loyalty for those golfers who play Smith exclusively or almost exclusively. They play in inclement weather because they have the season pass. Um, they will, and I've and I've talked to some of my friends and people that I know that have the senior passes, and instead of going to another course because they can't get tee times at Smith, they show more loyalty to Smith, and they they will play almost exclusively at Smith. And I think that's 
you know, that's something that we should consider as far as just showing loyalty back to those golfers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I think um, to the extent that um, we normalize something, it's the non-resident passes. Um, I'm just trying to think of how to do this. Um, yeah, so I, I would say go with what Mike was saying with raise the per round. Rate you get, on, yeah, on the you have resident. one situation yep. where the break-even is out of line with all the rest of them. Right. Would you, would you do it over fix a, that a two-year period? Maybe do it five dollars the first year, and then, okay. and then ten dollars in year two, just to kind of give people a little bit of a. Yeah, I don't think I would cushion. do it. Right. Here's the I agree. That, see, and I don't know how you administer this, Bob. The, the non-resident adult seven-day pass gets a fifteen-dollar reduction per round on Monday through Thursday, mm-hmm. and twenty-five dollars on the weekend. Mm-hmm. And what I'm suggesting is we make it a $15 reduction across the board. So the weekend rate will, will change by 10 bucks, but the weekly rate stays the same. I see. And then for the senior non residents on weekdays, they get $11 reduction, but on weekends, it's back to the 25 bucks. So I'm suggesting, again, we make them both 15 and then in both cases, the break-even rounds are 33 rounds a year. Which is what? Which is what all the rest of them right. basically run to. So it'd be easier to I'm good with that. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. All right, Mike, do you want to make a motion? I will be happy to. Uh, I move that we change the seven-day senior non-resident and adult non-resident pass holders discount per round to $15. Exactly. All right. And, and how many people? Can't. Are the, not many, though, right? We're talking well, hold on. Let's get a second, and then we can continue discussion. Um, I will second it. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, I'll say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. aye. All right. Aye. Oh, all right. We're voting aye. <laughs> um, all right. So that was unanimous? I'm not there. Yeah. Yeah, everybody here voted in the affirmative. Good. Yeah, unanimous then. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, two passes in 20, year 20-21, 20 there were 16 of them. I thought it was 17, but that was off the top of my head. Yeah. When I did good. that so, Yeah. Okay. But at least it's consistent across the right. board and it's not affecting a big population. Thank you, Liam, for your research for doing that. Yeah. Uh, right. he, 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 no he doubt about it. Bob did. Right. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Okay. No, I know. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. Um, but I think, right, they're going to have to, once they understand the numbers, I think they'll hopefully. Well, the, let's say that there's four people who are taking advantage of it doing 100 rounds. Like, if their break even is 20 or 30. Right. They're still, They're still saving, absolutely. Yep. yep. Well, if you go from 20 rounds to 33, and instead of getting a $25 reduction, they get a $15 reduction. That's $10 more. So, so that's $330 for that person <coughs> for the season if they make a break even. <coughs> Okay. Are we ready to move on? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, meeting dates. Um, Prove has the list here. Any issue with any of these dates? When's President's Day next year? No, that's so that's the next week, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's the twentieth. Yeah. March thirteenth. April tenth. April 
All right, uh, I'll take a motion to approve the dates. I will make a motion to approve the dates for 2023. Great, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> all right, great, thank you everybody. Uh, all right, flipping to the next page, uh, elections of officers for 2023. So 2023 will be my last full year, um, uh, and then I have that stub couple of months. I think, Priscilla, you and I have that stub period um, uh, in 2024. So I would propose that we keep everything the same for 2023, uh, which would be my last year um and then in 2024 we'll need new officers um which would mean um myself as chair peter sechrist as vice and then um uh, green's committee of priscilla and mike and the part three of mike and liam would all stay the same for 2023 what does everybody think of that agreed sure fine all right you make a motion. You want a motion i'll take a motion I make a motion that all the officers for 2022 carry over. 20 <coughs> all right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Great. All right. Um, goals for 2023. What I was thinking, I think we did this last year too. If, and I think the easiest way to do this, I, I you know, would be if everybody could send me. Um, you know, just some bullets of things that they would like to accomplish, whether it be the, the you know, the items we're talking about or anything else in general um, that we'd like to accomplish for 2023. And then I can kind of aggregate them and send them out to the Golf Commission, and then we can talk about them in January, um, about ways to accomplish those goals um, in 2023. So Fair enough. The homework is get them to me at least a day before the meeting, so I can circulate them to everybody. <laughs> January 8th, right? That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll put down. Uh, all right. Public comment. I don't know if there's anybody in the room. Is there anybody in the room there who would like to make yeah. a comment? <laughs> they're all set. They're here, but they're set. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, anybody on the phone? Priscilla, excuse me, Prue, do you know if anybody's on the phone? Uh, there is one other call. I'm not sure who it is. Um, does anyone have the phone? Want, does anyone on the phone want to make a public comment? Okay. All right. Hearing none. Um, anything else from anybody? All right. All right, guys. Well, have a great holiday. Have a good new year. I know that sounds weird to say already, but happy new year to everybody.